Hello everyone and welcome back to Cyber King Productions. Today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new second Doctor and TARDIS set. So let's jump into it. Starting off with the box, it has the same colour scheme as the previous B&M sets, with the blue covering the majority of the box, with the white for the text. The style of the box is also the same, with a picture of the TARDIS and Gallifreyan text on different segments of the box. The Doctor logo is shown at the top, second Doctor and TARDIS from the War Games at the bottom, exclusive Doctor and TARDIS set in a red box, and it also states that it's in the 5 inch scale and is part of the collector series. A large window covers the front of the box that spills over to the left side to get a better view of the set. Also on the window is the limited edition sticker which I've always found to be pointless. The left side of the box just repeats information but with an added bubble of text in form of the opening doors. The right side is a picture of the contents of the set with even more repeated information. The back features even more repeated information and a brief description of the war game story so give the video a pause if you want to give that a read. There is also some legal gobbledygook in the bottom left. The top has more repeated information apart from the added character options website URL. The bottom has tons of legal gobbledygook but gives a quick instructional image about how to open and close the TARDIS doors. The background display is of the Sid Rat Room from the war games. Now with the box out of the way, let's take a look at the second Doctor and TARDIS. So here they are, the second Doctor and TARDIS. It's not half bad. We'll put the TARDIS aside for the time being and get a better in-depth look at the second Doctor. Starting off with his black hair, you can see it's sculpted incredibly well with indents to represent the individual strands of hair. You can even make out his hair parting going around the back of his head. The face sculpt is excellent and really captures Patrick Troughton. Indents can be seen to represent his wrinkles around his eyes and mouth. The paint detail of his eyes, eyebrows and mouth are very sharp. A bit too sharp in my opinion, especially on the mouth. Moving down, you can see he's sporting a white top with his blue spotty bow tie. The top features some creasing and wrinkling effect, as well as some sculpting detail for his buttons. The bow tie features some white paint to represent the spots on the bow tie. His coat is black and features some excellent sculpting detail for his pockets, buttons and collar. More creasing and wrinkling effect is present across the coat and looks fantastic. The back of the coat has indentations to represent the stitching lines. His red handkerchief is also seen in his top pocket. The coat has been given some light grey paint apps to make the coat look old and worn. His arms are covered by the jacket and ends just below his wrist. The hands are sculpted to hold his recorder but no accessories are present with the set. The sculpting detail is excellent with detail to show his individual fingers and thumbs and even his nails. Moving further down are his tan tartan trousers that feature some light creasing and wrinkling effect. Some paint detail can be seen on his right leg to represent a cut in his trousers. And finally, his greyish boots that feature some light sculpting detail to represent the folds of the boot, as well as some paint detail to make them look old and worn. There's also some legal gobbledygook under his boots. Turning to articulation, his head can only be turned slightly and is incredibly stiff, so I would advise against turning his head. His shoulders can turn 360 degrees, 360 degrees at the top of the arm, 90 degrees at the elbow, and a 360 degree twist on the wrist, which again is very stiff. He features a 360 degree waist joint. His legs can slightly pull out to the side, but this is hindered by the coat. They can go out around 45 degrees, 360 degrees at the top of the leg, and finally a 90 degree bend on the knee. So some very good articulation for the figure. Turning to the TARDIS, I immediately have a problem, which is the mold. They've used the same mold for the fourth Doctor's electronic TARDIS, which is inaccurate. The first Doctor's TARDIS would have been far better. The TARDIS is painted in a dark bluish grey and features some excellent sculpting detail for the ridges and knots in the wood, giving the TARDIS a very realistic look. Starting with the lantern, it's sculpted very well with the base, struts, see-through plastic and the top. It sits in the middle of the flat roof. The police box sign is very bold with black text for the writing. The background is white with grey smudged across it which gives the effect of the area being lighted up as it would have been in the show. The doors feature two windows which have been given some paint apps to make them look dirty. The bottom left and right panes have been given a grain effect to match the show. The pull to open sign is black with white for text. The door handle and keyhole are present on the other door. The left and right sides of the TARDIS are the same as the doors without added details like handles and signs. The police box sign has a black background this time as it wouldn't have been lit up like the front. The back features, oh for God's sake, it features the speaker holes and battery compartment even though the TARDIS features no electronics. Come on character, this is getting ridiculous as it's like this with every B&M TARDIS. Just fill in the holes or make a new back piece already. The base of the TARDIS is lower to make it more accurate to the shell and the bottom features some legal gobbledygook. Turning to features, the TARDIS doors can open, simply push them in to access the interior. 
Yet again you can see that horrible battery compartment. To close the doors, pull the left one in and press the button on the floor to close the right. As you can see in the size comparison, this set looks great when put with other Doctors and TARDISes, or even against his enemies. So overall, what do I think to this set? It's not bad. I'm really happy they finally gave us the second Doctor's TARDIS, as now we only need the 6th, 8th and a War TARDIS, and we have the whole lot. Like the Dalek sets, my main problem is that it's a B&M exclusive, which has been hurting fans for years, as they can't easily find them due to people buying them all and selling for ridiculous prices. With that aside, I can't wait to see what TARDIS they give us next. I really hope we get 6th Doctor's TARDIS. Oh. Maybe next time then. So that concludes this review. If you liked it, please leave a like and tell me what you think in the comments below. If you enjoy Doctor Who content, then also subscribe to not miss any more figure reviews, as well as the Doctor Who fan series that is currently in production. Thank you all so much for watching, and until we meet again, goodbye.